It's game day, ladies and gentlemen. What are the Miami Hurricanes going to do tonight to get a bounce back win against the North Carolina Tar Heels? You are locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Saturday. I'm Alex Dono, your host. I'm a University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet and contributor to allhurricanes.com. Thank you so much to the everydayers for making Locked on Canes your first game day listen. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. Your 25th ranked Miami Hurricanes travel to number 12, North Carolina. Kickoff is set for 730 tonight from Chapel Hill. History, I think, plays a part in the betting odds here. Three out of the last four times these teams have met, game has been decided by exactly three points. If you follow the money, money appears to be coming in on the Hurricanes over the last few days. If you check the FanDuel odds, about a day ago, Miami were three and a half point underdogs plus 3.5. Money seems to be coming in on the Canes because Miami now sits here on game day as two and a half point dogs. That's plus 2.5, so it seems as though maybe there's some optimism that the Canes keep it within three points or win the game outright. Obviously, we need to see a big-time bounce-back performance after what happened not only last week against Georgia Tech, but how these last several matchups with North Carolina have gone. I'm not a big Mac Brown fan, but he has owned Miami in recent years. I'll give you my keys to victory tonight for the Hurricanes. I've got five of them, all right? Key number one, I didn't lead off with this one last week against Georgia Tech. I should have. I'm leading off with it this week. Hurricanes have got to cut down on the penalties. You need to understand how bad it's been. And I don't care if some of these calls have been, you know, BS calls and like, oh, the ACC referees, they love to screw us. Part of that is true. Team still needs to be more disciplined. Miami Hurricanes rank 118th out of 130 teams, 118th in the country in penalties. They give the opponent 70.8 free yards per game. That's basically a, a full touchdown drive. You're giving your opponent 70 free yards per game. You've got to cut down on that. And there's an extra challenge with that tonight because on the one hand, and we'll talk about this in a little bit, We all want to see the Hurricanes play with extra conviction and aggression and purpose, right? Be angry. It's okay to be angry after the way that Georgia Tech game ended. But the problem is when you play angry and you play with extra adrenaline, you know, sometimes you get a few of those personal foul penalties when you get a little bit too jacked up. So the Hurricanes need to be careful to keep their aggression within the rules tonight. But cutting down on the penalties is key because if you give 70, 75, 85, 90 free yards to North Carolina's offense. They don't need a whole lot of gifts. That offense is really, really good. My second key, and I think that they can accomplish this tonight, Miami's offensive line needs to dominate in all phases. This unit, I love these guys, Jalen Rivers, JV on Cohen, Matt Lee. Matt Lee is like my hero. With all that emotion that he showed on the sidelines last week, if we had, you know, 85 Matt Lees in the locker room, Miami would be 5-0 and right now, no problem, all right? And as Cooper, who's been an absolute monster, CC Maui Noah, that offensive line, they've only given up five sacks in five games. That's superb. Running the football, we know what this group has done. Obviously, the running backs aid in this as well, but Miami averages 211 rushing yards per game. That's good for 13th in the country. So if that offensive line can set the tone, they should have – a good advantage against North Carolina's defensive line. If that offense can set the tone, Miami can control the pace and tempo of this game. If you can find a way to do that, and most importantly, if you can control that tempo a little bit, the longer you keep Drake May off the field, the better. All right? Now, North Carolina, we've talked about it throughout the week. Uh, Their pass rush, they were extremely bullish in the first game of the year. Not as much since. They sacked, uh, they, they produced, Uh, nine sacks it was against uh, South Carolina in their opening game. They've only produced one sack per game in the four games since. 
So we'll see if Miami's offensive line can slow that pass rush down. My third key, Miami's defensive line has got to put pressure on Drake May. Miami ranks 13th so far this year in total defense. That's really good. 41st in passing defense. That's okay, not as good. Uh, but Miami is 18th in the country in team passing efficiency defense. So quarterbacks who have gone up against Miami have not been efficient. That happens because of the pass rush. That happens with good coverage downfield, but it really starts with the pass rush. And even though Drake May does a great job running the football, escaping the pocket, buying time, if Miami can create chaos in the pocket, that's the recipe for a defense having success. Leonard Taylor, Branson Dean, Ruben Hurricane Bain, Jafari Harvey, Nigel Lee Kelly, they must get into the backfield and make Drake May uncomfortable. Um, we'll find out closer to game time. I'm not expecting Akeem Mesidor to play tonight. I Just my opinion, because uh, Miami keeps injuries very close to the vest, but I'm not expecting to see Mesidor back yet tonight. But the rest of that defensive line needs to be incredibly stout. I want to give you a couple more offensive keys for Miami when we come back. Because you know what? Uh, I know that when people talk about the quarterback matchup and the players to look out for nationally, that guy, Drake May, rightfully so, gets a lot of love. But I still don't think Tyler Van Dyke gets enough of it. Tyler Van Dyke can be a really, really important piece of victory for Miami tonight. And TVD has played well against North Carolina in the past. So as we like to say here, we're only getting started on this episode of Locked on Canes. Guys, win, lose, or draw tonight. I know my legs are going to be feeling great and looking great in these bird dog shorts. I love these things, man. Bird dog stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh, and they give your leg a truly sculpted look. Bird dog shorts, they do the exact same thing as Lululemon but they fit way better. I've tried them both. Trust me. They fit way better than those regular shorts that are made of a stiff, a stiff restricting cotton bird dogs fix that issue by inventing cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki, but it stretches. So you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. Bird dogs uses anti stink sweat whip wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. So important for South Florida. Bird dogs are functional for any occasion, whether you want to wear them out to brunch, to lunch, to dinner, out to the golf course, out to the pool. They look so good. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on college or enter promo code locked on college to check out for a free bird dogs water bottle with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on college for a free water bottle at checkout. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first game day listen today. For the everydayers, if you want to take your everydayer experience to the next level, become a Locked on Canes insider. Guys, we have an exclusive text messaging community, the Locked on Canes insiders. You can click the link in the show description below. Try it free for 14 days. I give you guys... Injury updates when we get them, recruiting scoops. Uh, we get some juicy nuggets in there, one-on-one -on -one questions and answers, breaking news, all sorts of show previews on there. Try it out, guys. Locked on Canes Insiders. Click the link in the show description below. Uh, it's a good tool on game day because I'll let you guys know everything I'm seeing and hearing during the game. So click the link in the show description below. Try it free for 14 days. Then if you like it, you can opt in for $4.99 a month, and we give you a lot of added value on there. All right, continuing our five keys to the game for the Miami Hurricanes against North Carolina tonight in Chapel Hill, 7.30 p.m. The first three, just as a refresher, cut down on the penalties. Miami's offensive line needs to dominate, control the pace of the game. Miami's defensive line also needs to dominate because you need to pressure Drake May. If you don't pressure Drake May, you're not going to win this game. Now, number four, I go to Miami's offense for this one. Tyler Van Dyke. He needs to brush off last week. Not all the interceptions were his fault, but he did throw three INTs last week. The offense only had three points at the half. Miami's got to start quick, which means TVD needs to play like the Tyler Van Dyke of the first four games this year. He needs to play like the Tyler Van Dyke. I know Miami didn't win the game, but he needs to play like the TVD that played against North Carolina a year ago. Van Dyke had 496 passing yards against the Tar Heels last year. Again, everyone praises Drake May, and rightfully so. He's a future first-round NFL draft pick, I believe. But 
Tyler Van Dyke also deserves a ton of credit more than he's getting. Van Dyke right now, seventh most efficient quarterback in college football. Drake May is 27th in that same category. Van Dyke is having a really good season. And listen, uh, Miami not taking that knee, that was that was not his decision. If the Hurricanes escape with an ugly win last week, I think the narrative looks a little bit different. Tyler Van Dyke deserves more credit, but he's going to have to step up today. Uh, North Carolina, they rank bang average in passing defense, 52nd in the country. Uh, they rank 40th in rushing defense, but you know they haven't faced an opponent like Miami on the ground. Miami's got the top rushing offense in America. In case you were wondering, the Hurricanes produce 211 rushing yards per game. So you need your running back by committee. I know I already talked about the offensive line, but you need your running back by committee. Henry Parrish, Don Chaney, whatever order they play in. I don't care who starts. I, I just care how the whole game looks. A.J. Allen. Uh, we'll, we may see some Chris Johnson tonight. Unfortunately, I'm not expecting to see Mark Fletcher this evening. We'll find out closer to game time. But my key number five, guys, again, we go back to putting Georgia Tech behind you. Um, I'm only saying it so much throughout the last week because putting a tough loss behind you is something the Miami Hurricanes always seem to struggle with. I've got to hope this team, this group, this attitude is different from the Canes of recent years. The entire team needs to play with purpose tonight. Yes, you want to have a short-term memory about last Saturday, but you also need to play with a chip on your shoulder. Now, hopefully, players and coaches learned a lot from that game, right? Shannon Dawson maybe learned something about his offense with some of the play calls that didn't work last week. Uh, hopefully, Miami's defense learned, you know, you can't just play well for 59 and a half minutes. You have to play well for 60 and yes, folks, I would love poetic if it played out this way, poetic justice. If the Hurricanes have the lead in the game in their final possession, you can 100% expect Mario Cristobal to take the knee this time around. I don't think he's going to make that same mistake for a third time because he did make that mistake uh, in 2018 in Oregon before making it last Saturday. But third time's the charm. Miami has that lead, final possession, God willing, they take that knee. I want to identify some X-Factor players in this matchup when we come back. Because, again, we all know who, like, the big-time playmakers are going to have to be. You know, we look at Tyler Van Dyke from Miami, Drake May for North Carolina. But I want to talk about some of the other players that could really help decide this matchup tonight as this is really important. We talked about this yesterday. It it really feels like a must-win game for Miami. It's a must-win game, I know, for the fan base. Uh, it's really a must-win game in terms of keeping your chances alive to play for an ACC title game this year. And you certainly don't want to allow a tough loss to turn into two tough losses. So this is a must-win for Miami. We'll talk about some of the X-Factor players who can affect it on either side. I've got a handful for North Carolina. I've got a handful for Miami. So... You know what you want to do? Guys, you want to keep it locked right here to Locked on Canes. Therapy has helped me a lot in my life, and not just after what we saw last week. I'm sure a lot of you were looking uh, for help with better help, but guys, whether you're having trouble sleeping, you're having trouble managing your family life with your personal life, better help can help. I benefited from therapy, guys. If you're thinking about starting, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire. Get matched with a licensed therapist. And you can switch therapists anytime you want for no additional charge. Like If you feel like maybe someone can address your needs better, you can switch no problem. Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on college today and get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash locked on college. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. Remember, you want to try our Locked on Canes insiders, our exclusive text messaging community. If you want to join, try it free for 14 days. Click that link in the show description below. All right, X-Factor players tonight. Um, here's one for Miami. Don't know for sure if he's going to play or how much he's going to play. Tight end Elijah Arroyo. 
Now, he finally suited up last week, didn't get into the game. Is it finally time for him to get in? I hope so. Now, an important note, I don't expect with the Royo coming off the injuries he's coming off of, I don't think it's going to go zero to 60 with that dude where he hasn't played and then he's going to play 55 snaps tonight. I, I'm expecting him to play maybe a handful of snaps. God willing, he gets in there. But the difference that Arroyo can make as a pass catcher, that's really going to affect your entire tight end rotation. Now, um, we have to this point absolutely loved what we've seen from blocking tight end Cam McCormick, who is a master He's a master at his job, like blocking tight end. I don't think anyone does it better in the country. And I love seeing young Riley Williams become more of a weapon. He caught a touchdown, his first collegiate touchdown last week. But the type of juice that Arroyo can add to that offense in that tight end room, I'm hoping we see a handful tonight. He can be an X factor. Another one. You knew his name was going to come up at points on this episode. Leonard Taylor. And I emphasize it because... You're going up against the guy I would argue is the best opposing quarterback on your schedule, right? I mean, there was a lot of hype for Connor Wigman. There's obviously going to be hype around Jordan Travis and a really good Florida State team, but Drake May, probably the best quarterback you're going to face. So that interior pressure from Leonard Taylor is going to be critical. And as usual, Leonard Taylor's efficiency, his pro football focus stats look fantastic, but we need to see him on a night like this on the field for more reps, and we need to see consistent, disruptive reps from Leonard Taylor. This has got to be a Leonard Taylor game, my friends. He needs to step up and really dominate. Now, I know I can give you some footnotes, right, on that defensive line because another one, and I, I was saying this to Isaac Shade from Locked on Tar Heels when we had our crossover episode this week. Um, over the past few weeks, I would argue the best defensive lineman or at least most consistent defensive lineman on Miami for the past three weeks has been Ruben Hurricane Bain. Young man, you've got a chance to go out there and potentially change the game tonight. True freshman, hometown hero, Miami Central, high school football legend in the area. Let's go out and do it under the bright lights in Chapel Hill tonight as well. Um, I also, when we're talking X Factors tonight, I've got to throw Don Chaney into the mix. Especially, as mentioned, Mark Fletcher likely out for this game. We'll find out for sure, you know, about an hour before kickoff. But I'm not expecting to see Fletcher, who was in a boot last week. I don't expect him to play tonight. Don Chaney was Miami's best running back in that game last week. Now he's got a chance to respond from that so-called fumble. You talk about adversity. Chaney has faced adversity. He's looked really, 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 really good so far this season. I would love to see Cheney flash tonight. And listen, Mark Fletcher as well, man. Whichever one of those guys catches fire, I'll be fine either way. If it's Cheney who has the big game, if it's Fletcher who has the big game, I just really want it for Cheney based on the way that last week's game ended. I would love to see him bust out and be the headline maker tonight. That's just me being selfish there. Uh, Cam Kinchins, of course. He's the heart and soul of this team. He's the one who's got to keep this defensive backfield organized against a great list of opposing receivers, tight ends, and an excellent quarterback. Now, Cam, he's the All-American, but he did make a big individual mistake on Georgia Tech's game-winning touchdown. I don't expect Cam to make that mistake again. I think he's going to bounce back. Uh, I'll give you a few for North Carolina. Tez Walker. Right. Last week was his season debut against Syracuse. You know, he was finally given his uh, immediate. Well, not even immediate because he missed like the first four games, but he was finally made eligible by the NCAA. And he had, I guess, kind of a quiet debut, but he had six catches last week. And, you know, he hadn't been practicing with the first team up until he was cleared to play. And so I feel like what happened against Syracuse last week was UNC easing Walker in. I think he's going to play a bigger role or at least try to play a bigger role in this game because he's their best wide receiver on paper and they have some good ones, all right? Another one to look at uh, on the defensive side, linebacker Cedric Gray. This is someone who is going to try to put pressure on Tyler Van Dyke. He's got 13 quarterback pressures this season. Uh, he's the team's leading tackler. He was last year. Defensive back Elijah Huzzy. That's someone to watch out for. He's already got three interceptions this season. Okay. He's a ball hawk. Uh, another one for Carolina. Running back, Marion Hampton. 
again, no one has been able to run on Miami to this point this year. The Hurricanes have the top rushing defense in America. Um, we haven't had any opposing standout running back performances. Hampton is a really good one. Uh, you know, obviously their offense doesn't rely on him as heavily as they rely on May in the passing game, but he really helps set the tempo. He's had a productive year so far. If Miami can shut him down the way they've shut down every back they've faced so far this season, that's only going to make things more difficult for Carolina's offense if Miami can make them one-dimensional. So that's the way that I see it. Um, guys, honestly, I don't, I don't care what the final score is as long as Miami's number is higher than North Carolina's. I do not care. Now, when I was uh, when I did my crossover with Isaac, uh, I predicted a, a really high scoring game, 37-34 Miami. But you know what? If it's three to nothing, <laughs> if it's 13 to 10, if it's 27-24, 37-34, if it's 37 nothing Miami, I all I care about is winning this game, win ugly win pretty, just win, just bounce back. And yes, a victory over the 12th team in the nation in their house tonight would look good on Miami's resume. It would feel great for that locker room. And it would be like, like an injection of B12 for the fan base. I mean, it would just, it'd be like chugging an energy drink. It would be something for the fans. So guys, I appreciate everyone who tuned in today. Uh, let's support our Canes tonight, 7.30 p.m., Miami at Chapel Hill to take on the North Carolina Tar Heels. I am Alex Dono. Thank you for supporting the show. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel. If you're listening to the audio version, and by the way, you can find the audio anywhere you get your podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, the Odyssey app. Make sure to hit a five-star review for us. Leave us a five-star uh, review or rating, whatever you have time for. And we will talk to you tomorrow for a full game recap, hopefully a happy one, right here on another episode of Locked on Canes, part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.